Welcome to another video in the Timco Retail Manager course. This course focuses on real-world application development. This is a series, so the way to get the most out of it is to start from the beginning and watch through in order. However, if you're just interested in the topic this video covers, that's fine too. Think of this series like a bunch of Lego bricks. Each is valuable on their own, but seeing them put together is even more valuable. In this video, we're going to configure our front end project, which will be a WPF application. If you've watched any of my WPF video videos before, you probably know I'm a big fan of the MVVM framework and of Caliber Micro specifically. We'll be including that in this project as well, since it allows us to much more easily develop and maintain our application versus trying to create some of these things ourselves. Now, if you're a Patreon supporter at the $5 per month level or higher, make sure you head over to the site to get the latest source code. And let's get started. So let's right click on our solution and say, add new project. Come here to Visual C Sharp, Windows Desktop, and we're gonna select WPF application making sure it says .NET Framework afterwards. And let's call this the TRM WPF User Interface. And that's quite a mouthful. So we have TRM, which is Timco Retail Manager, WPF to indicate the type of user interface and then user interface. We could just say TRM User Interface. The problem with that is what if we add a second user interface? What do we call that? And that's why um, we have this kind of dilemma. The other thing you could do, and maybe, this is, maybe we'll do this, is let's do desktop. So TRM desktop user interface. The likelihood of us having another desktop interface that competes with this or you know sits side by side with it is pretty low. And so I think we can probably go that direction and make our name a little better. I could say TRM Desktop UI. And since I have desktop, I probably will just make it a little shorter. So it's TRM Desktop UI. Um, the one of the things we're going to do, though, is we are going to change our defaults for property. We have this assembly name. And here, I'm going to change that to Timco Retail Manager. So the assembly name is Timco Retail Manager, even though the, the actual project is called TRM Desktop UI. And the assembly name is what's going to have the .exe at the end. So it's going to say Timco Retail Manager .exe, which makes more sense to the end user, even though our projects are named TRM. So that's just a little tweak right out of the gate we're going to do. Next, I want to set this as a startup project, but there is a problem right now. And for right now, I'm going to solve it by just saying this is a startup project. But in doing so, in the next lesson, we'll tackle the idea of what do we do when we want two things to start at once. Because right now, just the WPF application will start, which is fine for this lesson. But for next lesson, when we want to test talking to the user interface or to the API from the user interface, we have to have two different things started at once. And so we'll tackle that next lesson. But for this lesson, we're just going to right click on our user interface project and say set as startup project. That way, when we launch this, it'll actually launch in our, our launch our WPF application. Now, the other thing you may see when you first start up, especially if you've not used WPF before, or if you didn't know how to get rid of it, is this little black box here. Let's zoom in. So this, this box right here, it's actually kind of a grayish, I guess, is the WPF tools for debugging the user interface. But they drive me nuts. I don't want something on top of my form, and it's just... I don't use it. So if you go to tools, options, and you come down here to debugging, which is a major category, 
Inside here, it is the general. And if you scroll down, you'll find enable UI debugging tools for XAML. And one of the options is show runtime tools in application. If you uncheck that box, hit OK. The next time you run your application, you will not have that box in the middle of your WPF UI. All right, so let's set up a few things. First of all, I am going to add Caliburn Micro to this project since this is going to be a, a Caliburn Micro uh, WPF application. So right click on References, Manage NuGet Packages, go to Browse and search for Caliburn.micro. And the first one up here has this icon of a sword. And the latest stable version right now is 3.2.0, which is what I'll use. If it's a later version, go ahead and use that. It may be a little bit different. And if it is and you have problems, you can always roll back to a previous version. But I'm going to install the latest version at 3.2.0 and hit OK to that. And now Caliburn Micro is installed. Next, I'm going to add the folder structure for my MVVM framework. Now, one of the things that people get confused on is what the different items in MVVM stand for. So views kind of makes sense. People think of those as the user interface. That's what we actually display to the user. But where it gets a little bit less clear for some people is the view models and the models themselves. And so sometimes people try and relate these to the three layers of an application, which would be the user interface, the business logic and the data access. But that's not really true. These three different items together form the user interface layer. Now they we've broken apart the user interface layer into three different layers, but the combination of the three add up to the user interface. And that's where it gets confusing. People ask, well, where do I put my data access? And the answer is not in this project. We don't put it here. Instead, we put it in our class library, which we'll do in a in, a, in our next lesson. But instead, what this is, the models, that's to hold the data for the views to display. And the view models is kind of like the glue that holds it together. It's what takes the models and gives it to the view. And so that's, that's where the confusion kind of comes in, where we're thinking, well, models must mean data access. And no, it doesn't. It means data for the user interface. Hopefully that clears some things up for you. It makes things a little bit more easy to understand when it comes to MVVM. So let's create a new view model, which is a class. And we'll call this shell view model. And that's the convention is view models end in view model. So the root name for this is shell. So we'll have a shell view model and we'll also have a shell view. So I'm going to add that and I'm going to say that this is public. And that's all I'm going to do right now for the shell view model. I'm going to add a view, which is a window. So a window, and I'm going to name this shell view. I'm going to leave this alone as well. So now I have just the basics of my starter page, essentially replacing this main window.xaml, which we're going to delete in just a minute. Let's go ahead and close that down since we are going to delete it. First though, I'm going to right click on my project and say add class. I call this bootstrapper. 
And this is what we'll use to set up Caliber and Micro. This inherits from Bootstrapper Base. Hit, hit, hit Control Dot and add the using statement for Caliburn dot micro. And now we can create a constructor that has initialize in it. And we need to override one of the methods in bootstrapper base. So protected override and it's on startup. So you just find a list and hit tab, which will create the proper parameters and the proper return type. And we're not gonna actually use this, but it would create the base dot on startup. So instead we'll say display root for shell view model, hit control dot to add that using statement. And now open and close parens and our semicolon and what this does, is it says on startup, I want you to launch shell view model as our base view. It's kind of like what we do over here in app.xaml, where we say the startup URI is main window.xaml. That's saying main window.xaml is what's going to start. Well, in Bootstrapper, we say we're going to start shell view model, which notice we're not starting the view we're starting the view model because the view model will then launch the view based upon Caliburn Micro wiring those two things together. So now we need to go over to our app.xaml. We need to remove this startup because we're not actually going to do the main window.xaml. And we need to add a new resource dictionary. So resource dictionary. Now this is a resource dictionary dot merged dictionaries. And then resource dictionary. XAML is very verbose. And we'll say local. And you want to bring in bootstrapper and say the key is bootstrapper. Essentially, that's bringing in the bootstrapper, which is this class right here. It's bringing that in as a resource. And when it does that, Caliber Micro is going to say, oh, okay, when you launch, initialize it. And one of the things we're going to do is say, oh, we're on startup. Therefore, run this method right here, which is actually an event. And it's going to say, well, my root to display for is going to be the shell view model which is going to launch a shell view model, which launches the shell view. And now we have our application actually launching the correct uh, view and view model on startup. So now that that's done, we can delete main window.xaml. And we should be able to still run this application. It's just that the shell view is what will actually launch. So if we hit start, we come over here and notice that in the upper left hand corner, it says shell view. So we have in fact wired up MVVM in our WPF application. So thank you for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.